you, Julien. Thank you, Ted. And thank you, the Prezi people, Anjali Agarwal and Peter Pukut, who helped me with my presentation. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story, which is actually a true story. It's the story of a woman called Akatu. Akatu was named after her grandmother, who was a Brazilian Indian person. And Akatu is a beautiful name. It's made of two words, A and Katu. And A means, at the same time, seed and world. For the Indians who live in the forest, the seed contains the tree that contains the forest that is the world. And katu means good or better. So akatu is a good seed and at the same time a better world. Since the seed is individual and the world is collective, it's a good individual for a good collective. When akatu was born, her parents were very worried about the world. Actually, they were living in a world in which the paradise is what they bought at that period of time. Everybody was worried about what to buy, and they were working a lot and stressed about buying, consuming all the time. Actually, they were living to consume, actually more than they were consuming to live. Uh, they were not feeling free because consumption was so strong in their lives that their identity was really linked to consumption. And they were feeling like novelty was dictating their lives. They were running towards the future. They would lose contact with themselves. Running towards the future, out and away of themselves, looking for a future in which they would be more satisfied with their own consumption. Even uh, in uh, poor areas, you would see people who were linking, who were trying to link, actually, I should say, trying to link their own identity to what they consume. And even if they were not able to consume something which was branded and that would portray who they were to society, they would try to get it, fortunately, this way and not assaulting someone or robbing uh, a, a tennis shoe. So social status at that point in time was very much defined by the way people consume and especially what brand they would consume. Everything had to conform to social recognition or for social recognition. Buying things, uh, branded things, they had all to conform to social norms that would lead to social recognition. And this was so strong that even the body of people was being changed in order to conform to what was right at that point in time. There was an epidemic of plastic surgery. But at the same time, uh, life was becoming unbearably meaningless. Drugs and alcohol, depression, was part of what people were, see were seeing at the time of Akatu's parents. There was a study at that point in time showing the relationship between per capita income and happiness. And this was what it showed for the United States. In about 50 years, income per capita had grown almost 300%, and the perception of subjective well-being, which is another word of saying happiness, was stable. And this was an indication that consumption, which was allowed by the increase in income, was a competitive consumption. So people were not consuming because they needed to consume something, but because their neighbor consumed, their brother consumed, their uh, relatives consumed, their friends consumed. So people were alienating themselves from society, alienating themselves from themselves and from their dear ones. It was a really bad uh, situation as far as uh, the parents of Akatu were seen, and not only from the individual and psychological point of view. From the point of view of the environment, uh, the world was consuming at that point in time 35% uh, more than the earth was able to renew. And that was happening on when only 25% of humanity was consuming above its needs. 75% of humanity were consuming at or below its needs. And even so, the, uh, the, there was a staggering speed at which the earth was being consumed. Air, water, land, uh, absorption of residues and garbage. It went from half a planet in 1960 
to the total planet in 1987 and to 35% more than the planet in 2010. If all the world's inhabitants would consume as much as the richest people on Earth, what would happen was we would need, at that point in time, five planets. Of course, there were no five planets. Uh, Akatu's parents were asking themselves, what is going to happen to our daughter when she grows up, when she is the age we are right now? So humanity was facing two different uh, ways, and one of them was really a difficult way to go. Fortunately, there was something good at that point in time. Telecommunication, internet, mass media, all was available at that point in time, so that there was a possibility of le raising the level of consciousness of people in terms of the impacts of consumption, in terms of what was really happening in society, in terms of the psychological well-being and health of society, so that people chose to change the world. Actually, when I say people chose, the ma critical mass of opinion leaders in society really worked hard in order to conform a new world for the next generation. Akatu was living in that world where I'm going to portray her. And this is the true story of uh, Akatu. She was living in an echo house, a small house, very comfortable one. She had all the products she needed in 50% of the space that her parents needed. The house was powered by renewable energy, which is something that their parents knew, but this was widespread now, like the power of the wind and the solar. Uh, recycled fashion, because they, they, needed to, they wanted to use, in, in Akatu's life, they wanted to use everything to the end of the life of the product. So they would recycle even clothes in recycled fashion. And that was a product of the period between her parents, in her own lifetime, of awareness of interdependence. People uh, perceived during that period of time that there was no one thing that could be done in the world that would not affect the rest of the world. Everything was connected. They knew that it was import, in, impossible to export pollution, for instance, from one country to, the, the, to another, because the Earth is a unique planet, and it's, you're going to export to the same planet. It was impossible, they perceived, to keep the difference between rich and poor the way it was because it was provoking violence and that violence would go uh, worldwide. And there was no security mechanisms that would uh, be able to hinder that process. Akatu's life was very much rooted in the community. She was very close to her friends, to her family. She worked only 20 hours a week. She worked at home, she worked with video conferencing. She was very close to the community in the sense that the community was uh, the space where she was sharing her sadness and she was sharing her joy. The community was the space for her self-development in terms of knowledge, in terms of artistic development. Everything was shared within the community, not only uh, personally or physically, but also virtually. This situation was taken also to the choice of criteria for products and services. So the criteria that Akatu used were that products that she bought would have to be durable and they would be repaired again and again. A service economy was developed. They had to be reusable, repairable, and recyclable, all of the products. They couldn't be disposable. She wouldn't buy anything that was disposable. Uh, they should be local more than global in the sense that the, to develop the community was interesting for everyone in the community, but some things had to come global because the community couldn't do everything. But they wouldn't be transported in long distances uh, just for the sake of uh, consuming for the sake of consuming. Uh, shared use was extremely important. There was a complete change in the concept of ownership. Someone was talking about this uh, just a while ago. And shared use, for instance, in au uh, automobiles, in cars. Uh, she didn't have a car. She would use uh, uh, a shared car from a company 
using on a pay-per-use basis and coupled to the transportation system. In the weekend, she would get uh, rent a larger car to go further away from the city with her family, which was uh, her husband and two kids. Uh, all the materials used were renewable, non-toxic, and uh, organic in the case of food. Uh, no waste was produced by everything that she would buy, so that packaging was reduced to, uh, to uh, 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 the least possible, and everything was reusable and uh, renewable, so no waste. Uh, virtual was preferable to material, like in, in music, in literature, uh, which her parents already saw, but in her case, uh, most of the things were uh, virtually, including trips. She could take uh, trips to other countries, other places, and feel the scent, feel the, the, the uh, perfume of a, a place, or even talk to a person in a different country. And finally, intangible. Ta intangible was preferable to tangible in the sense that she would love to go on a stroll in a park with friends, with a dog, with her family, and she had the time to do it. She had the time to do it because she worked at home most of the time. She only worked 20 hours a week. She had the free time. She had the friends. She had the good things that would nurture her to have a life uh, full of intangibles, which are free goods. There was a world library, which was being uh, supplied by knowledge from all over the world, and experts all over the world on a... On a, on a uh, who were elected to be uh, the good uh, uh, judges of what would be in the World Library and what not, uh, helped by the whole community on an open source basis, uh, built a World Library, which had everything. And the future of education, the f education at that point in time for her kids was mostly virtual, except for uh, a relationship to teachers who would try to get from children the best that they could give in terms of uh, developing a reflection on community, developing a reflection on the universal rights of citizens, and making out of the children citizens that would have a very clear identity to each one of them, but at the same time would be able to talk and uh, share a community, to work in a community to play in a community in a way that would be totally uh, uh, in tune with the values of the community and with the values of humanity. Uh, interconnectivity was important. The cloud's uh, internet, which had started at her parents' uh, time, was totally active. Everybody could have access to knowledge and uh, information. Video conferencing for her uh, work uh, work in a future world, world that was uh, a day-to-day -day thing for Akatu and everybody who was living at that time. So the world of Akatu was a world which was completely different from her parents' world. First, consumption as an instrument for the well-being and not an end in itself. So identity was not linked to consumption any longer. Second, consume to live and not live to consume. Even advertising, because of that, was changed. Advertising was functional in terms of products or would talk about the values uh, and beliefs of the companies so that consumers could feel their identity share with the company they were buying products from. And that was the measure of loyalty uh, for consumers and companies. Search for a meaningful and fulfilling life was the center of life. Consumption was not. So people were not being consumed by consumption as it was happening at her parents' time. And most important, friendship, love, affection, and motion, and art, were, which are all expressions of humanity, were central to the life of Akatu and were central to the lives of everyone in the time of Akatu. Relationships were built based on elements of affection and emotion. Fragilities, as well as strength, were legitimate in that society where Akatu lived. So that a balance between 
uh, weaknesses, fragilities, and strength, we're able to bring the best out of each person in that society. Mother and father of Akatu uh, would, uh, or actually Akatu, talking to her kids, would say three conditions for partners and friends. The first one, they have to bring out of you the best that you can give. The second one, they have to offer you a very generous mirror, a very generous image of who you are. And the third one, mutual admiration. In a society in which friendship, love, affection, emotion, and art were so important, it was possible to find people who would have such a close identity to you along those uh, lines. And finally, work subordinated to life and not the other way around. At the, at the time of the, her parents, life was subordinated to work. Work was the, more, the most important thing in life. I'll kid with my uh, fellow uh, uh, speaker who was here before. Uh, work was so important that even talking about playing was talked about working. It was related to work and play. So play in order to work better was something that was happening at uh, her, uh, the, the time of her parents. I'm sorry to have joked with uh, my previous uh, speech. <laughs> Enjoying art is a, a very important uh, part in Akatu's life. And, uh, and that uh, uh, leads uh, to the world where Akatu was living. Actually, it's an infinitely more humanized society than in the old days. People were happy to age very gracefully. Akatu loved to say that people were, had uh, received permission to shine. Uh, governing bodies were using indicators of progress, which were not any longer quantitative only, but qualitative in the sense of the quality of life, the psychological stability of people, and how meaningful and how, uh, how fulfilling life was to everybody. The acceptance of fragility and strength led to a renaissance of creativity and intelligence and art and emotions. Art was in life. Life was a work of art. Uh, people who built this work were people like you, people who believed in an utopia of a new world, who wanted to be the change you want to see in the world, and people who would sing a, a song that was very important in her parents' uh, uh, time, Akatu's parents' time, which was something like this. Somewhere over the rainbow, skies are blue. <laughs> and the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Thank you very much. Thank you.